Uh, let me give my notes here. Uh, let me be clear. I'm going to pass whatever laws drain your pockets and your... Oh, sorry, wrong speech. Hey, that's from Barack Obama, Hussein. I can't thank you enough for picking me up after that health care vote passed the... Oh, wait a minute. That's Pete Olson's speech. How about the reality? Are you tired of being ignored by your elected officials? Are you tired of this arrogant man that's over here in this district that has no use for you whatsoever if you don't make over $500,000? Are you tired of that? We are the ones paying his salary, yet he is the one sitting there doing nothing for $17,500 a month. Doing nothing but taking away your rights, hiding under a veil of darkness, passing the Patriot Act, passing cybersecurity. Well, he hasn't passed it yet. And sitting here lying to all the good people about how he's behind NASA and jobs. Well, I'm sorry, Pete, didn't cut it yesterday. 434 people got canned, not in my district. Let me go to some notes because there's so many things wrong with this man. And this is what kind of person uh, that's in our office right now. And uh, we have a man in office that wants to go to war with Iran, yet he doesn't even know the name of the current president. I have on my Facebook a clip of July's uh, speech appearance by him on the House floor where he's rapidly over and over talking about President Katani. Well, President Katani has not been in power in Iran for some five years, but yet he wants to bomb these people who do not, don't even support their leader over there. Their leader was, uh, uh, how do I say it nicely, uh, corrupted the vote, sort of like what happens around here lately. So we have that. We also have Mr. Olson who pa who's trying to pass a bill called H.R. 809 that's praising a felon who bugged Senator Mary Landrew's telephone, praising him for shut getting Acorn shut down and calling him an American hero. Well, I'm saying, Pete, if you think that bill is such a great idea, I think what you need to do is keep going and passing that. People like David Smith said that big fat R and that fat D just means they've fattened their pockets off some corrupt officials, some corrupt corporation, some corrupt special interest. Somebody's filling their pockets. When I go to office and the special interest and the PAC people come banging on my door with the suitcase full of money, I got one thing to say to them. Pack your bags take your rags and get the hell out of my office and get the hell out of my country. I am no longer going to fight for large corporations and conglomerates that seek to globalize and destroy our way of life in America. It's not happening anymore. I'm staying by my roots. I'm by the people, for the people, since we, the little people as they call us, they're the ones paying the lion's share of the taxes, but yet they keep sitting up there in Congress on their high horse. We're going to pass this, and we're going to pass that. We're invincible. How do you decide what you're going to pass when you don't even read the legislation that tells me you're not doing your job? You're not ever doing your job when you let 3,200 pages Oh, let's just pass it and we can read it later. Which now we're finding out stuff in the health care bill is not even related to health care. It's more freedom oppression. They're now they're going to try again. Trust me, they're going to try again as soon as the election's over to pass cap and trade, which will be the death knell for the American economy. Because that means every trash bag Every piece of paper, every pencil, every tire that goes on your car, every gallon of gasoline, every hamburger, every piece of fish you eat, going to be an added tax onto that. 
And at the same time, they have a parallel bill in the background going that the sheeple in America don't know about. It's called S-510, which will prohibit you from growing your own food in your backyard. Uh, that's right. They're going to have a special police force to make sure you're not growing your tomatoes and carrots and squash and all that good stuff. And they're going to penalize you if you decide to share that with your neighbor. So drive up your taxes, shrink your paycheck even more, and starve you out so they can make everyone here dependent on the government. And what Pete Olson is going to do with that, he's going to agree with them. He's going to sign whatever they tell him to sign because he's not in charge. He has no idea what's going on. People like John Cornyn are pulling his puppet strings. People like Halliburton are pulling his puppet strings. And Halliburton, for those of you who don't know, they were also deeply involved in the Gulf oil spill. They tried to hide that, but I had an, a friend who was a former employee on oil rig saying that the cement poured on that, that uh, deep water horizon was substandard, and that's why we have devastation in the Gulf. Yet, Pete Olson is backed by, if you check on uh, govtrack.com, if you check on opensecrets.org, you'll check and you'll find out about 90% of his donors are oil companies, defense contractors, people like that. So I see what direction he's heading. Bomb Iran, keep this going on in Afghanistan. And on that note, with, Afghani with regards to Afghanistan, how can we be in a country fighting a concept for 10 years? In a country, in a nation that is so impoverished, these people are practically eating dirt over there. And there's a $5 million reward for Osama bin Laden. You mean to tell me, you want me to believe that somebody can't say, hey, he's over there. I don't believe it. Why? Because Halliburton is supplying all of the stuff for our military guys and doing a bad job of that. But again... Halliburton, another con another contracting company and another contributor to Mr. Olson's uh, agenda, his campaign, his program, that I don't see where the $717,000 that he spent on his campaign has no videos, nothing but a bunch of signs and a bunch of sheep following him around thinking he's God. Well, sorry, Mr. Olson, you're not God. You better wake up because this, there's more of us poor people than there are of your rich, elitist, political hack friends. And we're tired and we're pissed off and we're coming to Washington and we're coming to take our country back because we're tired of it. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. I mean, I face, I face a, just a blinding opposition because people just don't know what's going on, but I urge you, anything you doubt I said, go on the internet, look it up. You're gonna find out the sad and sorry truth as soon as you can. And then it's your duty to wake up your friend, your neighbor, your coworker, and everybody. Because if this man is in another two years, we will see all the small businesses in this district continue to be ignored. So we'll see more families on welfare rolls, trying to get food stamps and stuff like that, which I just uh, don't want to see. I want what I'm about is people to have jobs, have pride, own their own homes, and stop these banksters from taking everything away from them because it's most disgusting to me. The banks and the corporations don't control our country. We do. Now let's get out there this season and let's take it back. Thank you very much.